In this video, we're going to talk about question number six from the 2011 AP Calculus AB Form B examination. Uh, so in this question, it says, let G be the piecewise defined linear function um, defined on the interval from negative 2 pi to 4 pi, whose graph is given above, and then let f of x equal g of x with that graph minus the cosine of x over 2. In part A, they want us to evaluate the definite integral of f of x from negative 2 pi to 4 pi, and then they want us to make sure we show all our work. So because f of x is defined um, as g of x minus, whoops, well that's okay, but for the rest of my writing I want that to be smaller. It's g of x minus, um, actually let's Get rid of that, that was just too big. Um, it's g of x minus cosine of x over 2. Then the integral will just be those two separate integrals subtracted. So for part a, I'm going to take the integral from negative 2 pi to 4 pi. First of g of x dx and then subtract from that the integral from negative 2 pi to 4 pi of the cosine of x over 2 dx. Just like for derivatives, we know that the difference of the integrals is equal to the integral of the difference, so you can do that. You can do that, no problem. Now, some people are going to panic and say, how do I take the integral of g of x? I don't have an equation for it, but this graph of g is very nicely a triangle. And so the derivative, which one, in one meaning for the, um, I'm sorry, the integral, one meaning for the integral is the area under the curve is just going to be the area of that triangle. Area of a triangle being one-half base times height. So I take one-half the base, which from negative 2 pi all the way to 4 pi, is 6 pi. And the height from 0 to 2 pi is 2 pi. That'll give me that integral. And then over here, I actually need to anti-differentiate and then evaluate. We know, of course, that the antiderivative of cosine is sine. But we've got to be careful because it's not just cosine of x, it's cosine of x over 2. So you're going to actually get 2 times the sine of x over 2. Um, and just a real quick, not complete explanation of where that comes from is you've got to do u substitution. And then you, have, you let u equal x over 2. So then du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x, is going to equal 1 half. Derivative of x over 2 is 1 half. And then I just separate, and what you get is 2 du is equal to dx. So when I substitute in u in here for x over 2, I substitute in 2 du for dx, and that's why I get this extra 2 in there. <sighs> okay, so that's just a quick explanation of that. Um, then this is evaluated just like the other one from negative 2 pi to 4 pi. So let's go ahead and actually evaluate that. Um, and so when we evaluate that, of course, over here, you have 1 half times the 2 pi, which is just going to give me pi, so this is going to be 6 pi squared. And then here, when you plug in, well, we can probably do it, minus 2 times, got to be careful with my minus here, minus 2 times the sine 
of 4 pi over 2 is just going to be 2 pi and then subtract from that 2 times the sine of negative 2 pi over 2 is just going to be negative pi and then if you remember your unit circle you remember what the graph of sine looks like you know that sine is 0 at all the multiples of pi it's 0 at or the integer multiples of pi it's 0 at 0 it's 0 at pi it's 0 at 2 pi it's also 0 at negative pi so all this just becomes 0 so my answer is 6 pi squared okay so that's part A let's move on to part in part B it says find all value find all x values in the open interval negative 2 pi to 4 pi for which f has a critical point so first of all we notice it's an open interval so we're not including negative 2 pi or 4 pi those are not possible answers the critical numbers are of course where the derivative is equal to 0 or is undefined and so my derivative of f f prime of x would equal g prime of x minus or I'm sorry, not minus, but plus the derivative of cosine of x over 2 is going to be plus 1 half sine of x over 2. And if you need to review your chain rule to understand where, where that derivative comes from, then now would be a good time to do that. Now for this derivative of g here, this g prime of x, what I notice is that g prime over here on the left side is, so here we'll say g prime is equal to 1, because we're going from negative 2 pi up to 2 pi, that's over an interval of 2 pi, that's the slope of 1. And over here, if you just look at it, here g prime is equal to negative one half. And so I actually can treat this f prime of x as a piecewise uh, defined function um, where we look at g prime being ne one on the left side, negative one half on the right side. And actually it's going to be undefined right here at zero because it's a cusp sort of like the absolute value function the slope is going to be undefined there so let's treat this as a piecewise defined function now here Oops. okay sorry about that took me a second to get things to move around the way that I wanted them to but uh, anyway like we said f prime of x can be a piecewise defined function where f prime of x is equal to 1, which is the slope of g of x on the left side, plus 1 half sine of x over 2. And this is for negative 2 pi less than x less than 0. It's undefined for x equal to 0. And it was negative 1 half on the right side plus 1 half sine of x over 2 for 0 less than x less than 4 pi. So we've got three parts to my derivative of x, and I need to know where the critical numbers are. So I just need to solve each of the three parts sort of separately. Um, now, of course, I already have here uh, one critical number, and I'm going to shrink this a little bit. Um, kind of large there, and we'll solve each of the three parts separately. Notice though, like I was trying to say for a second, that this is already a critical number, because a critical number is where the derivative is undefined. So we've already got one. 
Um, so that's nice. Now we need to look at the other two parts. So let's look at each part individually. And a critical number is either where the derivative is undefined or where the slope is zero. So what we'll do is we'll just set each of the two parts individually equal to zero. So we have zero equal one half plus I'm sorry, one plus one half sine of x over two. Now, if I think about solving that, I bring my one over here and I've got negative got negative one is equal to one half sine of x over two. So that tells me that negative two is equal to sine of x over two. Now if you think about your sine function, sine goes front has a range of negative one to positive one. Never equals negative two. Now you might be worried, well this is sine of x over two, so what about that? But the divided by two, if you remember, just shrinks, uh, just compresses your function horizontally. So it doesn't change anything there, it just compresses that horizontally. So this will have no solution. No solution. So there's no critical number there. So let's worry about the other part. Um, and so we set, uh, let's shrink that up a little bit and move that off to the side. And now let's do the other part where we set 0 equal to negative 1 half plus 1 half sine of x over 2. And let's see if we get a solution here. So I add the 1 half to both sides. 1 half is equal to 1 half sine of x over 2. Multiply everything by 2. 1 is equal to sine of x over 2. So I'm thinking, okay, where is sine 1? Well, sine is 1. Um, at, <coughs> well, the, the solution to this, let's just simplify, is going to be pi. Because if I plug in pi, I get pi over 2, and sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So x equals pi is my solution there. So I have two critical numbers at x equals pi and from over here again at x equals 0. So my two critical numbers are x equals pi and x equals 0. Alright, real quick let's look at part C. I say real quick because it shouldn't be too bad. They want h prime of negative pi over 3 if h is equal to the integral from 0 to 3 of g of x. Well, I know that if I'm taking the derivative of an integral, h prime of x is just going to be uh, g of x times 3. Times 3, because I've got to do the chain rule here for this 3 of x that I'm plugging in. So, I look at now h prime of negative pi over 3 which is going to be g, I'm sorry, this is g of 3x, g of 3x here. So g of 3 times negative pi over 3 times 3, which is g of negative pi times 3, and that is going to give you 3 pi, um, because g of negative pi is pi. <clears throat> so you get pi times 3, which is 3 pi. And that's part C.
And that's the end of the question. Yay.